So, wow, my name is Anja. Um, I am originally from Germany, but I left Germany the first time in 2007 and then definitely in 2009. Um, learned, lived, worked in different countries. Um, in France and the French part of Switzerland, in Canada as well, and now uh, since 2014, I live in Mexico. Uh, I think I've always been interested my entire life in languages, and it's really that my life in, I think it was really Switzerland that made me realize how important languages are and how many doors it opens. Um, and yeah, and I think like traveling in general, like the typical reason that everybody would say, like traveling, uh, you meet people from all over the world. Um, and for me, it's also this like, when you have a goal and you reach this goal and, and suddenly you can speak a language and I like talking in general and yeah, learning other cultures as well. At a very fluent level, I'd say I speak five. Um, those are obviously German, then as a second language, I'd say it's French, English, then Spanish, Portuguese. I did study various languages. I did like finish this like Latin degree, but obviously I don't speak it. Um, and then I do uh, speak a little bit of Swedish, but at a very beginner level. I studied Mandarin for a while, uh, but I had to pause it because I just couldn't focus on it. And I recently started started with Nahuatl, and uh, Nahuatl is one of the yeah, it's one of the indigenous languages in Mexico, and this is just a complete new experience for me, and it makes me so happy learning that language after four years in Mexico. Yeah, amazing. So learning languages and fitness have so much in common. Like first of all, obviously the motivation. Um, a lot of people say, okay, let's start, and we want to exercise tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and they do it and then the next day they decide oh I'd rather stay in bed it's warm in bed for language it's the same so you might be motivated the first day and then like daily life routine and um, so the motivation you need is the same um, yeah the dynamic is the same and also you can combine it very well because actually your brain is like um, the mental activity when you combine it with physical activity you have to try it and you will see that you really will get better results um, when you exercise and at the same time you learn something. Like seriously, it stays in your brain afterwards. So I started uh, the whole concept with German um, because, well, I teach German for 10 years now and this is the language that I best know and I best know how to teach it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I did a couple of uh, tests before because the idea is really to make videos out of this so that people could do it like online and, and with their phone anywhere in the world. Um, but I did a couple of tests now in Mexico, started with like very beginner levels. And I mean, I teach German for 10 years, so I'm able to compare uh, results from like people who haven't done with, with the exercise and people who studied during exercise at the same time. And they were really able to pronounce it in a better way, To uh, remember the words, um, yeah, and also it's just fun because often also when, when I talk to so many polyglot friends, uh, we talk a lot about languages and, and yeah, you always feel like they're not, well, they're focusing on learning languages, sitting at a desk, but exercising is so important in life and when you can just combine it and we're always struggling in life, we don't have time to do this and this and this and this, so when you combine two things, it's just amazing. And, and when it gives even better results, that's even, well, perfect in the end. So in 2014, I moved to Mexico. Um, in the beginning, it was really to finish my last semester of my master studies. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed it so much and, and fell in love with the country that I decided to stay. And I didn't even, it was never my plan to like stay for four years, actually. But yeah, it just happened that way. And in 2015, I decided to launch my own business. I decided to launch in Germany because I feel like safer to do it in Germany because that's my background, that's my culture and being a foreigner in Mexico, launching a business is actually not always easy. So I launched this online business about language learning in Germany um, and it's, a, it's called Zaloa Languages. It's an online, online language school. So we work with the native speakers from all over the world to teach 
through a really cool uh, online classroom, uh, languages online, uh, in like individual classes or very small groups up to five people. And uh, yeah, living in Mexico, when you start your own business, it's not always easy. Um, so living in Mexico helped me a lot financial wise because obviously it's cheaper than living in Switzerland. Um, and yeah, and I think then the Mexican market back then just wasn't ready. I mean, it wasn't also my, my target, but the Mexican market wasn't ready for like online classes. They were like online and, and PayPal and what's that? And a credit card, what? And I don't even have a computer. Um, now they are ready, but three years ago they were not. And uh, so they asked me, can't you teach me as well? Uh, but here in Mexico. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this because you're my friend. It's all started that way. And um, no, no, I was in Mexico. I, I did. So I just launched my business and um, uh, I launched my business in Germany. Uh, but I, it was just the paperwork that I did in Germany and then went back to Mexico because since it's an online business, it like, didn't really matter where I was. Um, yeah, and then people, because I was living there, uh, started asking me, hey, we want classes. So it started that way, and then Mexico is a lot about, like, I didn't even need to do, like, marketing. It was just, like, the quality of the classes that they enjoyed a lot, and they really felt that they advanced way more with my strategy than they had advanced in, like, any other, I don't know, universities or big schools with, like, 30 people in a class. Um, yeah, and it, it was never my plan to launch a business in Mexico, not at all. Um, but then since so many people asked me and then they started asking me about French classes and English classes and Spanish classes, and I was like, I really prefer that people learn with native speakers and I have a good level. I can't speak French, I can't speak Spanish, I can't speak English, but I'm not an English teacher, I'm not a Spanish teacher, I'm not a French teacher. So I started like collaborating with other teachers I hired uh, Spanish teachers, French teachers, English teachers, then later Mandarin teachers, Portuguese teachers, uh, Nahuatl teachers, Russian teachers. So yeah, now three years later, we have uh, about 30 employees uh, teaching eight languages to every month more than 200 students in the end, online and offline in Mexico. What is my biggest challenge or what was my biggest challenge? That's a very good question. Um, I think um, on the business side, really, I always thought like, oh, and how I'm going to do this with taxes and finance. In the end, that worked out pretty well. The biggest challenge business wise is human resources. It's not always easy to work with so many different cultures. Um, and in the end, what I really enjoy is teaching, but what I really do is leading people and showing people how to teach. And yeah, that's, I think with so many different cultures, it's, it's, it's definitely a huge challenge. Um, and on the personal side, having my own business, I think the biggest challenge is Keeping friendships, definitely. Um, that's a very hard thing because I often work 16, 17 hours per day. And it's not like this like eight to five and then you have your weekend. No, I work every weekend basically. Um, and I enjoy my work, so I won't complain. Um, I love working, this is why I do it. I, I love my job, I, I really think I have the best job in the world. But it's just hard to keep friendships at the same time because they wouldn't like understand it sometimes, you know, which is why, why do you do this? And for me, it's not only my job, it's also the responsibility that I have, of, I don't know, to my students and also the co-workers and yeah. German is extremely popular in Mexico. Um, it's just that um, it's not popular because people want to learn it. Like for example, they would learn French because they are maybe in love with somebody who's from France or they just love the language. German is really, they need it because there is a lot, um, like the German car industry is very um, huge actually. And so in order to like really find a job, most of the people need German, even more than English sometimes, especially, well, this is more where I live in Puebla. Um, but yeah, they need it and uh, yeah, in the end they, I think at least like in our classes, they also like the language, uh, but they started because they need it, not because they love it.
I do a lot of different types of coaching. In general, it's like language coaching, which is more about motivation because I believe when you learn a language, obviously you have to learn vocabulary, you have to learn grammar, but it's all about your motivation in the end. And a lot of like polyglots might have that motivation or maybe because their jobs are related to something that has to do with languages or whatever. But a, a lot of people are not. And so this is the important thing. Start When you start learning a language, you're super motivated. But then at the, I would say like at the A2 level, motivation drops because you feel like, oh, I've been studying that language for like six months now. and I still can't understand the natives when they speak to each other. And this is when motivation drops. And so this is where it's most important to have a coach because this concept of having a coach, a lot of people know that from like a nutrition coach, a life coach, a fitness coach or whatever. And a language coach is basically doing the same, helping you to keep up and to like stick to that motivation, the initial motivation to learn a language. And uh, yeah, I do a lot about this motivation part in coaching. I do a lot in coaching, like how can you integrate the learning, language learning process into your daily life activities. So for example, in my workshops, what I do a lot is first I analyze the problem. When you started the language, maybe in high school or elsewhere, what was the problem? Why did, didn't you get to this like fluent level? And then secondly, what are your personal interests? Because learning a language, even if we all need the same grammar base, it's an individual process in the end. And it's a long life process. And so it's very important that you find your own way and that you combine it with your interests because the day has only 24 hours in the end. And um, yeah, so this is those two coaching sites, motivation and also how to combine it with other activities and for me fitness is something very important and I wish more people would do fitness so um, yeah I really believe that the motivation you get out of those two and and when you combine the activity together is just hilarious. I used to live in Ottawa and I love the city and I get this question all the time here in Canada why do you enjoy Ottawa? <laughs> so honestly um, I mean I lived there seven years ago so um, uh, seven years ago I was a student back then and student life I think is like always great when you go and exchange um, I'm not sure if I wanted to live in Ottawa uh, like now um, but uh, definitely back then it was a great city. Uh, university was amazing because I had like, some of my classes were in English, some of my classes were in French, so that was amazing. And people were extremely nice. It was also for me like my first experience in, in like Northern American region. And so when I went to the supermarket and people would ask me, hey, how are you today? And I was like, oh, why do you ask me that? Nobody would ask me that in Europe. Um, so that was, I think that was also the re experience. And, for me, it was a lot like this nature part, which is like everywhere in Canada, I guess. Um, but I went like running every day from like Ontario, the side of the Parliament to Gatineau, the side of Quebec. And that was like an activity that I did every single day when I lived there. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was just uh, an amazing experience for me. So back then I was already teaching German and so I had some of my students um, were English speakers, not knowing French, and the others were franco so French speaking, but they all knew English. And I think it was easier for me to connect with the franco ontarian uh, just because like language wise so they spoke French but they also spoke English while the English speakers were sometimes like mm, we don't want to learn French I know we need it but it was more like forced and um, yeah but in general in general with all of them a very positive experience I still have friends there I just came from Ottawa yesterday and I've met a friend that I hadn't seen in seven years and like yeah those friendships are just amazing when you live abroad I guess. Uh, so I've already been here last year um, and then I think last year I had heard about it because I had been to other polyglot events in Europe especially and then people started talking about it 
And so what I've missed a little bit in those like, uh, well, at those events in Europe was a bit the social side of, of learning languages because I really believe it's important when you know something that you give that, well, knowledge to other people as well. So last year I did my conference about how you as a polyglot can help to make this world a little better. And when I saw last year the program of the, of the conference, it's like, oh, again, there's something, you know, like how can we being polyglots help others? That is for me so much missing. So I texted the, just the Facebook page and I think Tetsu was the one answering me. And he said, you're so right. I feel this is exactly what is missing. And actually, we, you're super late with your message, but I would love you to come here. And um, yeah, this is how I started. And then just because I, well, I love Montreal, I like Canada. Um, so this is why I came back this year. And obviously with a new topic, because it's always important to have something new and new ideas and new product. So my workshop is going to be about my new program that is called learn and burn so this is a program that combines language learning with fitness and um, yeah like testing the results as well to see like okay what can you get out of a 45 minutes training workshop and how can you learn german vocabulary while exercising at the same time